Okay, I know I'm supposed to sit here and be quiet for the next couple of seconds. But I just have to step in here and point out that never before have I seen in one image, one image, both the best and the worst of Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, let me let me switch this over so you can see me and you can see what's going on here just a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> so this is a default starting location. Like this is a part of the the default airport. Uh, we're we're in Beirut at uh, Oba, and this the sky is absolutely gorgeous. The 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 surrounding terrain is beautiful. The lights are gorgeous. And then there's this. There's there's this. Um my plane has been a soboed in half. <laughs> I just I just want to point out you like you can see on the ground where they had to fix the texture because it had an airplane there when they took the satellite imagery. But, uh... <laughs> but the spawn point ain't quite right, or more correctly, this... this jetway is a little, um... Wrong. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, it's both. Okay, this plane should be about, you know, 20, 30 feet back. And it should be a little further this way. <laughs> we should not be... Uh, bisecting the plane with the jetway. That's not quite how boarding the plane <laughs> works. <laughs> hey man, how you doing? Uh, thank you so much for being here and, and for like being ready before stream starts. Like, um, even I don't often get here that, that long before uh, stream starts, but uh, today I had to start setting up about two hours early because I wanted to make sure that I had everything ready because uh, we're we I, I I tried to jump into uh, Microsoft Flight, which required about twenty gigs of updating. The plane needed like twenty gigs of up. Well, it's not twenty gigs of updating, but it, it was some updating. Why is Pac Man there? Pac Man? Where is Pac Man? I don't see Pac Man. Did I, is, is, are you talking about my logo? Like my spinny logo? Is it still on screen? Because it shouldn't be. I mean, look at my live output. You make me panic, man. All right. I don't see Pac in there, but okay. Uh, hopefully everything's going okay. Uh, maybe the spirit liner. Uh, let's see if I can pan the camera a little bit. Oh my god, the Spirit Line! The, there's default planes on the, the, like, include Like, this is not me or another player. This is just part of the scenery. <laughs> and, uh, I think they had a little bit of a problem with the jetway as well. Um, I don't think those pilots are okay. Actually, I think all of these might be. And we're just gonna take a little stroll around this this airport a little bit. Okay, no, this one's safe. I have one safe aircraft. Yeah, the jetway is nomming people. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely is, and I'm very concerned why we have such such hungry jetways. Let's get a nice overhead view. Let's let's check on this one. Is that a KLM? I think that's a KLM. Let's see if that KLM is is okay. There's Pac Man. Oh, there is on the uh, on the top. Oh, that's probably so that when they're like moving the jetway, they can tell which way the uh, the the ramps are going. Yeah, that's a KLM. Are you okay, Mr. KLM? Have they eaten you yet? I don't think it's eaten him. I think it's actually connected properly. Yeah, that one's connected properly. 
Let's see, we got any others? What about you? Are you okay? We're gonna go and check and make sure all of the uh, all of the uh, airplanes here are safe, that they're not being assaulted. Um, we don't king shame here, but we also don't do vor. Uh, okay, I think I think that's all the default planes. Also, look at that, Jesus. I have seen better on freeware airport. Actually, I think this airport in X-Plane has some better looking scenery than that. Um, but, I mean, overall, like, while there is some, some badness here with the roads and everything, overall, the scenery in MFS is really good. Um, like, it's not a bad sim. It, it, let me be more specific. It's not a bad game. This is a great, um, scenery simulator. It is, it is not an, an aviation simulator. It's not an, it's not a flight simulator. I feel like I was lied to. Um... Why is my plane Air Canada? Uh, because I did not know, like, I was rushing to get things ready. So at the time that I was picking my livery, I didn't know what airline actually flew this sector. Uh, for, for the record, it's, I think it's Air Italia. Um... Which is strange since it's going to Romania from Lebanon. But um, Air Canada is just one of my favorite airlines. It's one of the only airlines I've actually flown with. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. We have... Okay, no. We just have this weird, like, parametric uh, windows that aren't actually modeled inside the plane. I mean, the jetway is more modeled inside the plane than the inside of the plane is. <laughs> All right, so enough dicking around. Let's let's get inside the cockpit. Uh, and let's start our checklist. And let's get this bird off the ground. We're going for a little bit longer flight than usual today. We're going to go for about three hours. Uh, so we need to turn battery one and two on. Uh... Recorder ground control is in op. Uh, external power can come on. Uh, fuel pumps are all off. And now we need to deal with our load sheets. All right, we're going to load in kilograms. And then, now I need to switch to my. Uh, Light plan. Let's see, we need 89.38 kilograms as a total. Uh, fuel 89. Come on, move. Oh, I do not like that this doesn't live update. There, close enough. 89.55, cool. And then our... Payload, let's see. Passengers, 179. Okay, we're just going to have to go with total payload. Which means 18.7 kilograms. So I'm just going to throw it all... Uh, no. We need another about 4,000... 18.7, uh, so we need another... 9,600... No, 9,500. So we're going to go with... 47 here to be Ah 
<sighs> oh wait, I can adjust to here. Never mind. Okay, my payload needs to be a total of 18.7. You know what? Close enough. Close enough. We're going with that. All right. Ever since I started watching Endearing, my recommended section is filled with seven days to die streamers. I need help. Yeah, I've got the same problem. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, she's gonna. She's planning on doing some other games and stuff soon. So hopefully that'll change your recommended a little bit. Uh, how do I get back to... Nope. Nope. Where is... <sighs> that is not... That is not... Where... Why? Pilot. Close. No, that's, that's not where the... I hate to tell you, that's not where the pilot sits, my mans. Um... Can I, can I move? Can you, can you let me go? Uh, can I free look somehow? Like, can I move the fucking camera? Because this is not where I should be. Oh, uh, this is, this is really going to be a pain. Um... I don't know how to fix this. Okay, this is gonna... Fuck off. Shut up. Fuck it! We're just gonna do our best with being in a weird position that I don't like. Um... Why do you keep moving me over? What is going on? I keep moving left. Like something is making me pan left. What is going on? Yeah, something is making me pan left. It's not on my HOTUS. Uh, it's not on my rudder pedals because I've tried hitting every button on my rudder pedals. Uh... No, nope, stop moving left. I can't. I can't deal with this. Um. I legitimately do not know what to do. Let's see. Is there something in controls, keybinds? Okay, that's all properly configured. Anything here that moves the camera? No. Okay. What about you? Camera. Toggle, toggle, toggle. VR camera reset. Load, load, save, save, toggle. So 
Scan the camera. No. Translate cockpit view left. So it's this button here. Clear current input, validate. Look left, look view left, okay. So that should hypothetically fix it maybe apply and save um, resume now if i put a landing no pilot close aha there we go there now it's fixed oh sorry about that not really because i never get any since i play Call of Duty 2 Special Edition. Make sure there's no stupid VR functionality messing with it. Yeah, there wasn't. It would just... Apparently, it thought my left button was stuck down. Let me tell you, I miss the X-Plane menus. I really wish that, that it would go back to... You know, that I would just go back to X-Plane exclusively. Um, I really don't like uh, Microsoft Flight. I, I love the look of it but how it actually functions it's a game it's not a sim um okay we're just gonna continue on trying our best because that's just like 2021 vibes right like we're just trying our best and usually failing miserably um oh you can search by by button um so you can't you can do that we're gonna turn on. We're gonna we're gonna check our APU fire test. If oh, it works. Cool. Uh, and then APU master switch on. I'm gonna wait for flap open to appear. Be in the reverse of that. You can. Uh, that's what I was doing there. FSX's menu showed every device. I'm oh, okay. I get what you mean. What's this say? Warning. Enables free text and live map. If enabled, aircraft position data will be published for the duration of the flight. MSGS are public, not moderated. Use at your own risk. Cool. Data disk metar. I am not gonna set that up right now because I don't want y'all seeing my my uh, information. Uh, okay, we're gonna pause in it. Passenger number. 179. Okay, apparently that's not implemented. <clears throat> Cost index today is going to be 5, because of course it is. Cruise flight level is going to be 360. Okay, can't grab the wind. Don't know why. Um, wait, are we... It's not going to show me my IRS. Okay, we'll just IRS and Nish. Oh, fuck. Can I just... No, I can't. And these aren't separated. Line on ref.
This is fine. No issues. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is an airplane that's in, still in development. But like, so I can't go over here and go to GPS monitor. All right, guys, help me out. I need you to type this out to me. This GPS position one, 3349.4. 30, 03529.6 east. Can y'all type that out for me? I'd appreciate that very, very much. 33494 north, 35296 east. If there's anybody that can send that, like, right in the chat. I don't have an easy way to get to it. Uh, 3349 north. 3349.4. Try and just... Zero, three, three, four, nine, point, four. Uh, fuck. Ah, uh, okay. Point four north, and then longitude. The fuck was longitude? Uh, thirty-five twenty-nine point six east. Thirty-nine, thirty-five twenty-nine point six east. There. All right. That should work for that, I think, maybe. Flight plan seems to be good because they can't, can't they can't help the fact that it's entered by uh, Microsoft Flight. Uh, then we'll do init B. Can we just? Eh? Hey! Not allowed, okay. What is our fuel? Fuel is 8.9 tons. 8.9. And it be looks like trip time 4.2 hours 5% reserve final time 30 minutes so everything looks good we have extra time all right perfect all right so are you gonna yeah you're gonna just provide these for me Got something for me here? Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna do one slash zero up. Or my error. Lapse one zero point zero up. Format error. Is it because it's zero, so it doesn't want an up or down? Nope. Zero point one up. Oh. That's what it wants up. Zero point zero. It's been a while, okay? Haha, there we go. Okay, flex temp. 
Uh, flex temp's probably going to be about 66 degrees. We're just going to make it up today. All right, so it's flight plan, and it be performance progress. And we want to update at LROP, Lima, Romeo, Oscar, Papa. Uh, we want that here. Not modeled, okay. Okay, none of this works. Cool. All right. Let's try this again. All right. So that's that handled, which I really shouldn't have done this fast. Uh, APU is started and available. So cockpit lights look good. Flaps lever should match the ECAM. Speed brake should be retracted. Um, probe window heat is not avail is not needed. Uh, air conditioning panel should show no white. We are gonna change these a bit. Otherwise, this thing's gonna be entirely intolerable. Pack flow is gonna be normal. Um, cross bleed is set to auto. Air conditioner temp has been adjusted. Generator one and two should be on fault. Uh, external power can come off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. Ventilation panel, all lights off. Cool, all right, let's get into our pre-flight procedures. Adiers. On, on bats. Or wait, that's nav, not a line. On bat. This is making sure that in case power were to fail, these things wouldn't go out. What is something that never makes sense? Um, because most of this I can kind of actually explain. Uh, strobe light to auto. Wing lights on. Nav and logo to system one or two. We're going to use... <laughs> they haven't modeled to correctly say that there are three positions, but then the switch only has two. Okay, so the Adirs is basically turning on the GPS that tells the uh, computer where it's at so that the autopilot can help me fly the plane. Um, can't you just start flying? Yes. If I, was, if I did not need the navigation computer, yes, I could just start flying. Uh, I would still have to start the APU because that provides... So the way that the engines start, the main engines start, is by pneumatic power. So it's kind of like rolling your car down a hill um, and then popping it into gear to get the engine to start. Kind of the same deal, only we're doing it with pressurized air. Where do we get the pressurized air? We get it from the auxiliary power unit, which is just a really small engine at the back of the plane, small enough that we can start it with an electric engine. Um, so the electric motor spins the APU enough to get it to kick over and start, and then the pneumatic power driven by the APU starts the main engines because they are big and bulky and we can't start them without high power, uh, high pressure air. Once those are started, Yes, everything on the plane, to the best of my knowledge, does function. There are some of these things that I would not be able to overlook safely, like uh, pack pressure and all that, because I have to have pressure to the aircraft. Otherwise, when I go over 10,000 feet, I'm going to pass out and we're all going to die. Um, but the rest of this, like uh, the, the Adirs and all that, that's all part of the navigation computer. Um, the air conditioning system, I could mostly just ignore except for the cross bleed. Uh, the temperatures are for comfort. Pack flow is for pressurization, so that's necessary. Uh, checking the pressurization panel here is important, but it's it should always be an auto. Um, I would have to start all the pumps. That's one thing I'd have to do. Uh, but the rest of this is all for automation and for safety. Uh, redundancy too. Like that's why we have three Adirs. 
is so that it provides us three points of reference to make sure that we're in the right spot and it doesn't like throw us into a mountain or something. Uh, okay, we're gonna turn on seat belts and the no smoking light and we're gonna arm the emergency exit lights. Landing elevation should be set to auto. Perfect. Um, pack flow is as required. We've already set that. All right, now we can turn on our fuel pumps. And check our fire alarms. Yeah, technically we could just start flying. We could taxi right now. I just have to start the engines, uh, which doesn't take much. Okay, uh, radio one, two, three is already on. Mikdu is already configured. Uh, so we're gonna need to get pushback. So we need to find out our, our altimeter. Um, is there something in data here, I think, that allows me to get, not data. Do menu maybe? Maybe the FMGC, I think. No. Make do menu. Man, a lot of this stuff that they've modeled, I have no idea what it is. Um, some of this stuff is new. <laughs> Maybe it's under options. Ah, here we are. Here we are. Hold on. There we go. Metar. implemented we're putting in a lot of stuff that uh okay we're just gonna do it this way <laughs> i'm just gonna look over here okay so q h is 1016 so we need to change this to hectopascals 1016 and we're done look at that see how much easier that was why can't there be a microsoft train sim there is not a microsoft train sim however there is a train sim 2020 and it has a ridiculous amount of add-ons and it is very expensive. Uh, not the simulator itself, but getting, you know, any decent trains is pretty expensive. Okay, flight directors, both on. Uh, FCU speed dashed, heading dashed. Uh, altitude, we're gonna go to 36,000 feet today. I'm not gonna worry about ATC. 36,000. Perfect. Okay. Anti-skid nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel should all be normal. Uh, transponder, I'm not going to really worry about today, but we'll, we'll set it to 1200 just in case. Uh, and then we're going to turn our beacon light on. Let's reset our camera position. I need a hotkey for that. Uh, there probably is one, but I don't know it. I mean, good stuff comes at a price, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it is. It is. I've seen it played. It is very fun. There's also, uh, by the way, kind of unrelated, 
uh, there are some really cool streams on YouTube that are 24-7, I think, that cover, uh, like, Norwegian trains. They just put, like, a streaming camera up in the front of the train. And you, and you can just, like, watch and listen to the sound and, and watch the train travel through, like, Norwegian, you know, regions. Like, just going through the countryside. And it's and it's the most amazing thing. I I, I absolutely lose myself in it. All right, uh, so we're gonna need to push back. I think that's the hot key. Let's just shift. P ah, there we go. Uh, I will, after stream, I can't pull it up right now because I don't want to violate, um, DMCA or anything like that. Okay, so we're gonna remove, where's, where's my parking brake off? And they're gonna push me back. They really need a better pushback for Microsoft Flight, um, they really, really need that. All right, so we're almost ready. All right, so let's uh, ignition mode, starting engine two. Oh God! That was terrifying. Please do not to do that again. Appreciate it. We're just going to push back straight because it's really difficult to actually control the pushback in Microsoft Flight Sim. stop there I'm gonna set the parking brake they're gonna lower us uh, meanwhile what the hell is going on with engine 2 why is it not started Engine two. Can you can you start maybe? I think maybe I skipped APU bleed. That's probably it. Yeah, there it goes. We're gonna go through the, get that really sarcastic flight safety instruction. We absolutely are. Give me one second to stop this uh, playlist, and then. I think it was in C that it played best. Gives me something to do while engine two is spooling up. <laughs> okay, so these are still in op. That's not. Is that in op? I think that's in op. Yeah. All right. Let's open recent. Greetings from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. Thank you for choosing to fly Iraq Tech this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. 
because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like a seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll on. Now you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, it's no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of me. But it's not dangerous. I've practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year, passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being cold. Same goes for spilled proof coffee in teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray cable to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. 
But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chairs and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that. Um, I'm sorry about the uh, audio spikes. Uh, I, I only have so many places I can adjust things on the fly, and I was trying to... I, I used some really high volume on the player in order to deal with a low volume in OBS. I got it fixed, though. Um, okay, so we are coming to the end of the runway. We are just about ready for takeoff. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Throttles to 50%. Stabilized. And... Go for flex set. Eighty knots. If you want, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Go ahead and turn on our autopilot. We're at 700 feet. All right, and then let's turn off our runway turnoffs and our nose wheel lights. Over to the climb position. This is actually flying a bit smoother. The uh, flight should be about two and a half hours once we're in the air, which we are now. Now, that's going to extend a little bit because that's assuming we go at our cruise velocity from the moment we take off to the moment we land. So it'll probably end up being right around three hours. Um, I do, however, have a little in-flight entertainment for you in the form of Stream Raiders. Uh, I know at least Trashman is uh, familiar with it. Basically, it's about to throw up a link in chat. Just click that link. You are overspeeding. Uh, it should not have done that, but I should have been paying more attention. That was my fault. Uh, let's continue our climate. Why are we going no? Why, why are we going space shuttle status? I feel like that's we're pitched up really high. No, I guess we're not. Okay, anyway. Um, 
all you do is you just click the link, make sure that your Twitch account is connected so that you can, uh, so that it can, it can give you stuff. Um, and then you just place your dudes on the field, one every five minutes, and we will, uh, win, I hope. So enemies will be revealed over time. I'm going to put my guy right here down in the south. And then you guys just place them wherever you want. And we should win, hopefully. And you'll get... Uh... Is this already? Are, are we already? Uh, right. What is the transition altitude here? It's 13,000 feet. So why are you alerting me at 4,000? Oh, probably because we're out of constraint. Nope. No constraints. Okay, anyway. Landing gear is up. Ground spoiler disarmed. Landing gear is up. Ground spoiler disarmed. Nose wheel lights off. Uh, autopilot is on. Part of the climb to 10. Flaps are retracted. Engine mode should be normal. Yes. Um, engine anti-ice is not needed. Uh, landing lights at above 10,000 feet. We're at about 5,000 now, so no need to do that quite yet. Also, turn up some of this brightness a bit since it's daytime now. So we're going to see if I can turn on the weather radar. Apparently, that's a hard no. Oh, wait, there we are. It just required me to turn off the terrain. Okay, why are we stuck? Why are we not moving? Simulator. Simulator, what are you doing? Step Sim, what are you doing? Okay, we are moving. Look at constraints. Why why are we stuck? Okay, a sobo. I got a sobo. That's what happened. So yeah, um, there's that link in chat. Just click it and place your dudes. It looks like uh, Simbrief is currently saying that our ETE is about uh, 2 hours 45 minutes. progress page there uh, but yeah just place your dudes anywhere on the screen works uh, anywhere that's highlighted in blue um, though it might be uh, good to kind of consolidate our power as much as possible I'm not entirely sure though because I don't know where the enemies are going to show up on this map as I've never played it at least I don't think so all the streamers that I follow for it, like, they're much further along than I am because they have many more viewers than I do. Um, so they're much further along than I am, and I can't really keep up. So everything that I've played through as a player, I have been much further, but I have not been this early. Everything I've done as a captain has been before this. <laughs> like, you guys have seen everything that I've done. Alright. So, it looks like we're gonna reach top of climb. 
Oh, uh, 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet? Excuse you. No. 13. 13,000 feet, sir. You are incorrect. Oh, wait. We're not in Lebanon anymore. We're not in Lebanon anymore. I gotcha. Because now I think we're over the ocean. Alright, so while we're flying, let's jump into the external cameras. Do we have... Do I set these up? Oh, you useless cunt. Why? Alright. I'm going to see if I can't remember how to make this work. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold up, hold up. You are controlling the uh, plane... Why are we why are we turning? Why are we turning? Why why are we turning? Why why are we turning? We should not be turning. Plane, what the fuck are you doing, Asobo? Listen, you had one job. Okay, can we engage autopilot without you going insane? Okay, okay. Jesus. I welcome back. Uh, you should see a link in there for Stream Raiders, so anytime that you... What are you doing? Sobo! I should be able to trust you! Okay. You, you are on track. Ish. We're having some issues, but okay. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off our seatbelt light. Oh, see, technology is my favorite. I feel like favorite means different things to you and me. That's that's what I feel like. I feel like maybe we got slightly slightly different definitions, but. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> You're allowed to be wrong. Let's see if I can manage to prop this in such a way that I can actually see chat without looking completely away from my controls. But, uh... Yeah, I'm very nervous now because, like, uh, I've flown this plane before and it tries to kill me. I really want to, like, jump out and get some good camera views. Because my videos come out every five decades. Okay, I took a break. Alright? I release two videos a week on YouTube. I release one on Mondays, and that's Mega Man, and I release one on Fridays, and that's uh, that's my flight sims. Um, I took a break over the holidays because I wasn't sure what I was and wasn't going to be allowed to continue streaming. Um, 
because of, of legislation that was going through the Senate. Um, up until then, every week like clockwork, I had a video every Monday and every Friday. And they release at 12 midnight. So, 12 midnight central. So, that's GMT minus 5, I want to say. Um... So, it, for me, like, it's still Sunday for me when it releases. So that way, you'll definitely have it on Monday. Um, and then my, my Flight Sims release on Friday. For me, it's still Thursday at 12 a.m. first thing in the morning. Um... Ooh, this thing's climbing like a rocket ship. Um, and I... Oh, fuck. I did it again. Oh, the controls aren't working. No, no. Stay your ass on course. Cruising height's going to be 36,000 feet. So we are still 14,000 away. Roughly. And I'm having to watch this little bitch because when it's supposed to be... Like, I'm trying to take it outside and drone camera it. And then this should swivel the camera to the right. And it's not, it's moving the plane. See how it, it turns the plane for no reason? Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to get us some good, good views, but plane just does not want to cooperate today. Um, so we may just have to see it with the, uh, the external view where it's got all this nonsense. Now that works. God, I hate... None of this works. None of this works as it's supposed to. And this is the stupidest wing view ever. Like, I I get it. You're trying to provide a wing view. But who has ever ridden in an airplane from the end of the wing? So what are my hobbies minus this and MMX? Um, so I'm... I, uh, it's hard to answer that. A lot of what I love doing is learning. Right, and I'm a I, I'm I'm a doer. I, I I do things to learn them. So like, um, I'm learning AutoCAD, like like computer aided drafting by actually doing it. I'm I'm currently working on a design for a cat bed that is going to have like uh, a retractable canopy that pivots forward and back. Um, all of the uprights, all, like all of the tubes that make up the frame are going to be clear PMMA, uh, polymethyl methacrylate uh, pipes, totally crystal clear with RGB LED li rope lights in the middle of them. Um, there's going to be a mount for a camera. Uh, and I'm going to put a, like a nylon car a, a nylon strap cargo net underneath the uh, the beds so that the, the chunks of cats don't fall through them or stretch slowly stretch the bed material and then fall through them eventually. Um, and I'm playing with the idea of making some threaded uh, uh, like some, some, some screws to hold it together because um, like, I'm doing this for Nika, and right now, the one that Nika has, it keeps coming apart because of Rupert jumping on it, or jumping off it, I think, more, more effectively. Um, 
So, I have spent probably three or four hours in CAD so far. I have managed to make all of um, four parts. <laughs> and they are all just the feet. <laughs> but that's because I'm, I'm learning, right? I have no idea how to CAD things, how to design things in 3D. I have never engineered anything in my entire life. So, it's all a very learning process. Even though I'm screwing things up, I'm learning how to do them and how to do them properly. Um, and I think that's very important. Um, like, I'm making lots of mistakes. But I figure out how to fix them. Um, I also... I don't do it as much as I used to, but I do like reading. I, I, I like reading and writing. Both I prefer, uh, like, fiction. Yes, mistakes are what I learn from. And hopefully I will get all of my mistakes. And this is the, the power of CAD, right? You make all of your mistakes on the computer before you spend any money. <laughs> so when, when I realized that, like... Um, I'm supposed to be running these rope lights through through the uprights and through the joints, right? But the rope lights have an exterior diameter of 16.003 millimeters, and I have desi designed my feet to plug fit into the pipe instead of the pipe fitting into the, the foot. Well, then that means that the interior diameter of the height of, of the joint is only 10 millimeters and that's 6 millimeters too short, too small to be able to fit the rope lights or you could just use it to make new kinds of mistakes yes um, the mistakes are when I decide to play veteran tank levels uh, I have played um, oh god what was it uh, War Thunder uh, where I've where I've done some tank simulation, and that was fun. I'm not very good at it most of the time, but there are times when I do really really well. Um, I had one one game where I went totally untouched the entire game. When I cut my desk shelf, I made the dumb assumption that the board I was buying was actually a foot wide. Lumber always winds up being slightly smaller than the measured size. Yeah, I think that they measure from where the blade goes, not from where the cut goes. And, and the blade is obviously like, you know, half a millimeter wide. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, I, what I'm working with now is all like PMMA tubing um, and stuff that I will be 3D printing. So... Um, Everything should be the correct sizing, uh, like the, the interior and exterior diameters of this PMMA pipe, that is the metric, like, it has to be to the, uh, to, to the fraction of a millimeter. It's fun to play as a tank, but when you're in competitive, when you're competitive like me, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I haven't touched COD. Um... I've, I've never touched COD, uh, except for I did play it long enough to find out that it, it's not really my thing. Um, I don't like dying very quick, like in very rapid succession. I don't have time to learn from my mistakes and adjust. Um, and I, I require that. I, I require the opportunity to learn and adjust and grow. Otherwise, I just get frustrated. And in COD, I just get smeared every time. Go. There's some there's some proper wing views. See you, Sobo. I knew you could do it. Go ahead and jump back into the cockpit. 
Ooh, we got a little bit of a crosswind. Mostly try to play the campaign, but I have a pretty, uh, but I have pretty good skills with comp. Won a tournament once. That's awesome. Um, I haven't played anything competitively since I want to say Tribes Two. I played in a uh, War Two Thousand Three mod where my specialty was being very very fast and lightly armored. Uh, th this was a futuristic combat uh, first person shooter. Uh, you had jump jets, so very limited flight capability, um, depending on your weight class. If you got up into the higher weight classes, your jump jets did nothing. Except sometimes the, you could slow your fall very, very slightly, enough to take slightly less damage when you hit the ground. Um, but th that's it. But I flew in Falcon Armor. Basically, if a bullet thought about me for a little bit too long, uh, I died. But I was able to fly super fast, and I got really good at controlling my jump jets to where I could fly super close to the ground really, really fast. So much so that if I made a mistake, my little pinky toe might clip one blade of grass, and I just splattered across the, the, the uh, ground and died, but, but, I moved so fast that the turrets had trouble keeping up with me, and I could dip in, grab a flag, and then buzz the fuck out faster than most players could, could gauge where I was going to be and kill me, so the only thing that they could do to defend was they would deploy shields behind their flag, so I would grab it and then <laughs> smack into it and die immediately. Of course, I would fling the flag, but Falcon Armor, Mega Man X5, I have not gotten that far in Mega Man X5, however, um, totally different armor. <laughs> the Falcon Armor, I imagine, reduces damage quite a bit. This one, this one, if anything, it, it it's magnetically charged to attract the bullets. Uh... <laughs> And, and, okay, so there's not, to the best of my knowledge, an actual flight sim, flight simulator tournament. There are landing tournaments where you try to land uh, as, as gently, as close to the center line, and as on the thousand foot markers as you possibly can. Um, matter of fact, there is some of that built into this simulator. It gives you a, a score. And there are leaderboards for it. Um, you get it automatically given to you in X6, but it get but it is pretty nerfed. Jesus, that's see. I'm finding that in playing X5, right? I'm finding that I bitched a lot about how X lost all of his abilities between games in every single installment. Um, but then in X5, you were able to keep the fourth armor, and I find it kind of cheaty, and it takes away a lot of the incentive to improve, uh, plus the fourth armor is just dumb strong, but I don't like the fact that in X5, you can't upgrade your armor until you have all the parts. So you can't get it piecemeal like you can in all the other Mega Man X games. At least up to that point. I don't know what happens past that. But that's something I don't like. Is the, you know, like I got the leg piece. Let me equip it. Uh, select the Hunter ranks in X5 to 8. Uh, I don't know anything about 5 to 8. I've, I've played one day of, of X5. Um, he would give it to Light's hologram so he could make it much more OP. But Light's a bitch and would hide them. Uh, see, in 5, it's just that, oh, it's dangerous because the Sigma virus got spread everywhere. 
when you destroyed the Sigma, when you destroyed Sigma inside the Statue of Liberty. I'm not making that up. Uh, so it got spread over the entire world when you destroyed the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Um, and because the virus is everywhere, it's not safe to make it and install it in the moment, I guess? I don't know, man. It didn't make, really make any sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that may be what happens in 6 where, where he hides them and you fail. I don't know. Yeah, like... I'm very confused as to why... Like, if it was something big or high or, uh, you know, powerful, I would get it. But, like, they didn't say, oh, it was in a laser cannon or it was in a satellite or, you know, it wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anywhere where it would reasonably spread to the whole world. So, uh, it just confused me as to why destroying the Statue of Liberty would spread the, the Sigma virus everywhere. Also, it's... It, a computer virus is not like a physical virus, like, like a, a biological virus. It doesn't have particulates that are spreading everywhere. It spreads through EM waves. So it could find one antenna or a cable that runs to the internet, and it's done. Uh, like the pseudo-scrapper. Don't ask. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's that's the that's the vibe of X5. Just don't ask. Except that it's a good fun game and don't ask. why are we ascending still? Are we ascending? No, no, no. 36,000 feet. 36,000. We descend, please. Thank you. We're going above our uh, intended altitude. But yeah, there are uh, landing rate tournaments. They're not as heavily traveled because um, Flight Sim is a very niche community. There's not a lot of people that do it. Um, especially because it's heckin' expensive, okay? I'm, I'm already hundreds of dollars. I mean, just this Sim alone ran me $120. Uh, my HOTUS ran me about $110. My rudder pedals, I spent like 50 I think. But they're worth like 150 Um, the blast caused the Eurasia to get affected. Since it's a big space station, it would spread the virus much further. Oh yeah, um... The study level aircraft that I have in um, X Plane, one of them cost me eighty dollars, the other one cost me sixty, and the sim itself cost me forty, but I got it on sale. And you get me started on flight sim hardware. Believe me, I know. I know that you have spent a lot on flight sim hardware, especially since you're like. You're going hardcore. You're trying to, like, actually build a cockpit-ish. At least a flight control desk. I would love to build an actual cockpit. Like, I, uh, I'm not going to lie. There is a video floating around on the internet of a dude who bought a 737 cockpit, like, the actual scrap of the plane, and he had it towed to his hangar chopped it up and then had it towed to his house and he built the whole cockpit he built it into a cockpit I would love to do that um I would love to do something like that where it actually is everything is like the plane my overhead is up here over my head you know my my radios are down here by my thigh like I would love to do that I would absolutely Oh, I would die. I would die happy. It took the guy, like, five years to do it. Uh, it's not a quick thing. It's not an easy thing. 
and it's very expensive. You got a lot of a lot of expensive shit goes in. Why are you still at thirty? What are you? Can we descend, please? Thirty-six thousand. How hard is that to understand? Plane, Jesus. Um. So yeah, um, I would love to do that. I would. I would love to. Oh. Let's switch over to Stream Raiders. And then I'm going to start this battle. Looks like there were some people that joined in that actually know what's going on, because that definitely wasn't me. Um... Yeah, yeah, go, boys, let's go! Get them! Looks like, looks like the uh, left side got beat. That's unfortunate. Probably because they knew what they were doing and I didn't, so I wasn't there to back them up. See, I'm not going whole hog on the physical cockpit. I just want a tub with solid mounts. Uh, stick of throttle pedals, maybe a gear handle. Since VR is a hell of a lot cheaper than building a, a full projection setup. Sure. My <laughs> boys, they're dead. I mean, you still got one alive. You got a flag bearer. All right, beautiful. So we're gonna grant these randomly, but some somebody's gonna get three warriors and somebody's gonna get three rogues. Everybody's gonna get five gold. So trash man, you got three rogues. And Mad Frog SK got three warriors. Don't forget to check your army, see if there's anything you can upgrade or unlock. It's like I got the Retrolandia badge and five rogue scrolls. Which looks like I can unlock the road. Hell yeah. Alright. So, next we're going to open up... Go this way, because I'm not confident we can beat a boss. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and play... I'm going to play a warrior again. And I'm going to put him up... Yeah, I'm going to put... It Put him up here. All right, guys. So uh, just join in as you can, and hopefully we will kick this board's ass. That's a big hopefully. And let me switch this back to the flight sim. So, um... But he's a flag bearer, yeah, you're not wrong. But I mean, the flag bearer makes everybody around him more powerful, so if you're only going to have one thing that survives, the flag bearer is the one to be, because it's buffing everyone around it instead of just being one dude smacking at something. Uh, but yeah, VR is a lot cheaper. Now, I would say, here's the thing. This is, this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion. I would still like to have all the hardware... Um, I, w I would like to have all the hardware so like I could reach above my head and flick a switch and feel tactile not just see in the VR but feel tactilely of switching the switch right of course those toggles of switches those rotary selectors those aren't cheap I mean each individual one is but then when you realize that you know just the MCP here has uh, the three, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just, just on here has ten rotary selectors. You know, and I'd want these these two state push buttons. So for airliners, projection makes more sense because you have a limited view out the windshield. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um. But it also makes sense... Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. The... So with fighters... 
I would think it would be just as important, if not more important, in fighters to have the tactile feedback of having of having the actual controls around you, even if you can't see them. Because you could because at least in my head, right? In a fighter, you're going to be flipping a lot of these by memory. Like, you're going to be reaching for a thing and flipping it without looking at it, which is very difficult to do in VR. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if... Um, I'm, it is somewhat less with modern aircraft because everything is on the stick or throttle. I mean, not for nothing, but I've seen a lot of DCS, and it doesn't seem that way. <laughs> it seems like a lot of shit. I mean, not not everything, obviously, but, like, uh, not the things that you're using a lot, but, like, switching radar modes uh, on, on the, the Warthog, I think, I think it's on the right armrest, like, uh, right next to the canopy release. Um... I think, but like a lot of those things, the 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 engine starters and and everything, that's all down the sides of the of the thing that are out of view when you're looking around in your cockpit, right? Like, am I wrong? I don't know. Um, oh man, I would love to get a CAD design of a A320 cockpit. I'm sorry. I love Airbuses. Okay, I I love. I'm an av geek. I love all planes. I love all the jets. But I have a special place in my heart for Airbuses because they are. They feel to me more sophisticated. Well, for VR setups, you can just look at stuff and click it. Yeah, I mean, but like I understand that, but in a fighter, wouldn't you want to be able to, to flip the thing without losing track of the guy that you're watching? It's not real. What's not real? I don't know. I'm... You know, maybe I'm... I, I mean, I'm... I'm thinking of ideally what would I want to do, right? And then I judge off of that how how close a method of simulation would be able to get me to that, right? Like, right now, this is the best I can do. It's not ideal. I'm not happy with it. But it works, you know? I, I'm able to simulate the flight. Uh, obviously, we are currently... I think we're currently over the ocean. Um, let me look at... Live map... Nope, we are over camera. We're in Turkey. I wonder if we can get it to work with us on some camera angles. Come on, come on, come on. Why are you being such a bitch? You can see something. And I love that wing flex. I wish it wasn't so foggy. That makes it look pretty bad. But I'm sorry. Hydrate. Hydrate. You just... Uh, there we go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got it. Unfortunately, those commands don't show up in here uh, on my uh, tablet. I do want to check real quick. Okay, 23 hours left, so I can extend this. Move your words. I want to go ahead and extend this now. Uh, manage rewards and challenges. Extend. Number of days. 29 days. There we go.
I don't want that to become impossible for you guys to finish. Uh, so if you look at my channel rewards and challenges, there's the No Hodas challenge, which I'm going to be uh, a real smartass about, and I'm going to wait until uh, you guys have it like 99% complete, and then I'm going to let it terminate. Um, the poor tank is just relaxing on the complete other side of the map. Oh boy. <laughs> that poor tank. Hopefully he won't get into too much trouble. We should be able to... It looks like a pretty tame map. And it doesn't say that, that uh, enemies will be generated over time. All the cute cuts have been taken now, only selling a giant attack. Giant attack eagles. Hopefully, that doesn't mean it actually like spawns giant attack eagles. In fact, there is one monster. Uh, when you hear the story of me taking Point Du Hawk, what does that mean? So, I mean, I guess yes, but also, what does that mean? This would be a good way to kill us. Actually, it'd be totally impossible to open right now. The story of me and my friends in co-op trying not to die taking over France. I mean, it's France. How hard can it be? Which I, which I say not to impugn the French or France, but it is a funny joke. It's a funny and common joke. But Germany is in control. Okay, well that makes it a little harder. <laughs> The Germans know how to hold territory. Don't know how to keep it for long. They do know how to take control of it. Go away, or I shall taunt you a second time. I shouldn't have done that, because that actually hurts. Because <laughs> I've got... So, my buttons have backs on them, and when I tap my head like this, it thumps my head with the backs. You see up in there. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I just poked myself with little rubber stoppers. <laughs> Yeah, I want to hear your stupid story. Come on, man. I thought you were I thought you were typing. Get on it. Get on it. I'm I'm Do I look like I'm not interested? I shouldn't laugh at that. But I'm glad they're rubber. Yeah, they are rubber and not metal. Uh if I'd left the backs off of them, I would be driving spikes into my skull. Not something I really want to do. But no, feel free to laugh at me. I do a lot of funny shit. Like, I'm a dumbass. Do not mistake my being on the internet for me not being a dumbass. Everyone on the internet is a dumbass. I'm on the internet. You might have noticed that. Yes, yes I am on the internet. And yes, I am a dumbass. <laughs> there are no exceptions. Looks like I've got messages, and oh, gladly I did not look at them earlier.
Okay. So, dumb story. Come on. I want to hear the very stupid story of taking over France from the Germans. I need to add a posture check on here. Let me add a posture check. Manager Wards. Uh, Manager Wards and challenges. I need to add... One of these days, I'm going to have to, um, there we go. Oh, uh, skip the reward request queue. Redemptions push. Okay. So I do need to uh, like give. I do need to make graphics for all these. Uh, but if you do uh, reload the stream rewards thing, the rewards and challenges or the pom-poms uh, you should see a new one for sit up dummy you may not even need to reload it uh, but there is there is one to, to make me sit up because I sit here and I, I get bad posture uh, because I am a heck and chungus yes I'm aware of it uh, I have heard that before We're about to be flying into some clouds. Looks like our, uh, you know what, what, so this is something I see that's weird about this game, right? They have in the configuration options the ability to uh, pick the appearance of your pilot and co-pilot, but there is no co-pilot there. Like you can make it act like there's an AI co-pilot, but there isn't one that's actually physically there. Like I can't look to the side. I'm supposed to have a female co-pilot there, but she ain't there. I can't. Uh, where's where's my cameras? Where's my camera control. I'm go outside. Some planes have them, mostly GA. Well, but GA doesn't usually, like, I don't want to say GA doesn't usually have co-pilots, but they don't have them as often as uh, airliners do. Airliners have to have, multi-engine has to have a co-pilot. I think it's for when you run the tutorials, they give you an instructor. Yeah. But they phrase it differently, and that's why I get mad. One whole Angie. Another thing that they need to get sorted is replays. I need my replays. Ooh, look at that wing flex. And how much that wing is flexing. That's some rough air. It'd be great if I if I could hide all of this nonsense, but I can't.
back in the cockpit, make sure we're still on course, which we are. I think we've got some weather coming up. Can I angle that down? That's in up and that's in up, okay. I think that's also, yeah, in up. in up. Yeah, I can turn it on, but I can't do anything with it. I can't configure it any. Josh, my mans, you promised me a story. I want to hear it. What's going on? Stop placing. I'm thinking we're going to try and kind of swing this way and wipe things out in order. But I'm concerned that your tanks are going to run into the, uh, the, the boss monster in the middle. See, how far does this tell me that we are? We are 44% through the flight. Uh, it looks like we have an ETE of about an hour. So we should get there at just before 8 o'clock. Well, in the end, I think we're going to probably touch down around 8.10. So I called it now, folks. 8.10. That's going to be when I want to have you guys on the ground. Uh, and it's currently 646. So I'm wanting to see about an hour and a half, hour and 25 minutes ish. Hopefully, my uh, earbuds don't die in the middle of this. That would be unfortunate. Then I'll have to change my, uh, my input source for my audio. Um,. If they do go dead, you will hear me. Uh, you will hear me fine, but the game audio, the stream audio, stream leaders, and also this, which I forgot to turn back on. All that will stop. Um, so if that happens, be patient. Give me a few seconds. Uh, maybe yell, you won't have to yell at me because my audio will go dead too. Uh, I'll hear the exact same things you do, but just give me a second and I will make sure to get myself switched over so that you are hearing from the correct audio channel because for some reason, no idea why, OBS Studio just cannot figure out how to automatically switch from one input to, or one output to the next. So when it automatically switches from my earbuds to the speakers, it has no idea and it just tries to play what's not going to my speakers. Um, Windows is smart. I don't think anything, I don't think OBS should be stupider than Windows, right? Like, that's, that's not a mark in your favor, OBS. Just being honest with you. Um, so I want to look at where we're at. Yeah, it's impressive for it to be dumber than Windows. Um, so I want to look at this and see where our top of ascent is. Okay, we're still we we can't even see our top of ascent. 306, 320 nautical mile range. We still can't see it. We're coming up on KFK. Kilo, Fox Truck Kilo. And what does that mean? Kilo, Fox Truck Kilo. There it is, F -yon. We're almost 
almost into Istanbul's uh, uh, region. Let's see. I'll look at this on Centopeds. Get our live map. Oh, okay. The KFK is right over Afyon Kara Hisar. Afyon Kara Hisar. That is a hell of a name, and I'm not pronouncing that. You are Kilo, Foxtrot Kilo. There is a reason why they did this. Now, it looks like we do have some weather coming up over Hanko, which is our next waypoint after KFK. So, my radar is showing a wall of, uh, of weather right here. This is showing me a gap right where we're flying. <laughs> okay, so we have our story. It all began. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> it all began as me, Quackman, Rando, and James were in the boats making our way to the beach while gunshots are firing upon us from coastal guns when James' game crashed and he wasn't able to play. When we land, the boat's destroyed, and we have to wait 20 minutes for the AI to learn how to climb. And when somehow the AI figured it out, we were running, trying not to die, as tanks, AA guns, artillery, and machine gun nests shred every piece of non-German stuff to nothingness. I feel like there needs to be more to that story. So I, I feel like you hit like a character limit. And I'm going to wait to uh, to comment until you either tell me that you're done or until I get more of the story. This is something that I think more people should do like with, you know, uh, TV shows and shit. Learn how to chill the fuck out. <laughs> Games, too. Games do it far, far worse than TV shows and movies and shit. Guys, if a game that you loved sucks this time, that sucks. You don't need to send death threats. You can just not buy the game. It's okay. <laughs> like what you say, I would rather have nothing than this. You can have nothing. Just don't buy the game. Just relax. Dial it down a few notches. It's okay. People, people get mad. I do like that you have like legitimate military sounding nicknames. Quackman, Rando, and James. Although James doesn't sound like a nickname. Either that or like his... It, it's kind of like the dude from Down Periscope, right? Like... What's your name, Nitro? That's a cool nickname, but what's your, what's your real name? Nitro. But I've been working on a nickname. You want to hear it? Mike. You know... <laughs> <laughs> like maybe he's got a really cool a uh, really cool name and James is his nickname. I don't know. I'm not going to judge the man. I don't know him. I've also got a uh, a friend of mine who had the mysteriously growing name with a mysteriously shrinking personality, right? So, I originally met this dude and he was awesome. His name was Jim. And Jimmy was fun. Jimmy was fine. Jimmy was awesome. And then... And, and, and then he broke up with another friend of mine. Now, th this person is still a friend. And you may have seen her in some of our streams. Uh, but he broke up with her. And then he became Jim. And Jim, Jim lost his funny. Jim lost his sense of humor. And then he got with this other girl. And then he became James. Not, not Jimmy, not Jim, James. And James was not a not a good person to be around. He was not. 
he was not fun. He was not interesting. He he had no personality. James was just a James. You, you, there was no nothing to do with him. He, he, he was just. I saw him a couple times. It was not fun. It wasn't pleasant. Uh, I did, I did not have a good time. Um, and so when next we met, and he had become an asshole not just not just not a fun person to be around but but actively an asshole and was saying very mean things about people who were my friend um i started calling him jimothy because what's more ridiculous than james jimothy he is now jimothy and jimothy is an asshole and we don't like jimothy i'm not using any last names obviously i I don't even know that I remember his last name, but um, but no, Jimmy was a great guy. I, I liked Jimmy. I would still call myself friends with Jimmy. Jimmy died. Jimmy Jimmy died when Jim showed up, and then Jim died when James showed up, and then James even died when he became Jimothy. And that's just that just goes to show, guys. Don't forget to be to have to have a sense of humor. Like, you can laugh at something or you can cry at it. It it doesn't it doesn't take away from the situation, right? Like, fuck. <laughs> you gotta you gotta be able to laugh. You gotta be able to, cause there's too much there's too much horrible shit that goes on, right? Like, the world sucks. Let's be honest, the world sucks. If you can't laugh at it, you're done for. You know, and I ain't saying you gotta laugh every time, but like you have to be able to. You got That's gotta be a choice. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna pick this up because this shit's getting real. All right, I'm, I'm gonna start from the beginning. So it all began as me, Quackman, Rando, and James were in the boats, making our way to the beach while gunshots were firing on us from coastal guns. And when James' game crashed, so he wasn't able to play. When we land, the boats were destroyed, and we had to wait 20 minutes for the AI to learn how to climb. And when somehow the AI figured it out, we were running to trying not to die as tanks, AA guns, artillery, and machine guns, machine gun nests, shred every piece of non-German stuff to nothingness. Now let me note, we... Let me note, we were all really bad at the game, and we're dying every five seconds. And somehow, somehow, we all make it to the small coastal guns meant to be destroyed. Quack blows up Rando. I defuse one of the seven we need to get rid of, and we finally, finally destroy all of them. We clear the last two bunkers after the rest of the squad kept falling off the cliffs. Even me. We shoot up the last German, and boom. We only take we took only one of the sixteen areas needed to be. So thanks for coming to my TED talk, man. I can't, I, I can't, I can't say that story with a straight face, my man. That's that's hilarious. This reminds me of the first time um, I played uh, Sea of Thieves. That's a story I'm going to have to tell in just a minute because we have a battle ready to start. So I'm going to switch this over to Stream Raiders. Transition. And then we're going to kick off this battle and watch Pixels kill Pixels and hopefully uh, we don't all die. <coughs> okay, so it looks like they do spit out little guys. And I'm hoping that we manage to not die ourselves. Sea of Thieves was a fun experience to have. Yes. Okay. We had people in my group that um, they they have an unreasoning hatred of um, of the explosive barrels of the gunpowder barrels, and and it did not go in our favor. Um, you guys on the left doing fine, mostly. I mean, I think they all died. 
I, I think the ones on the left all died, but I'm not sure. All right, we're gonna open this chest, and two, one person's gonna get two bombers. Um, I got a healer, and everyone gets six gold. I wish I could give you more, but I can't. Trashman Streams got two bombers. All right. Uh, oh, fuck. Okay. Well, boss time. Ready to break out your epics. Oh boy. Grass rustles with movement. One unknown adventure awaits you. Oh boy. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with a I'm gonna go with a centurion. I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom. Y'all feel free to place wherever you like, but I would suggest kind of grouping up around me so that we kind of create one big massive throbbing force to penetrate their weak and, 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 and unformed defenses. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to switch this back. Yoink. Alright. So... One of our crewmates just loved to shoot gunpowder barrels. And my first mission, right, we were on a big ship. We are on a big, big ship. Not not, not the big old galleons, but something in the middle. Uh, a hell of a lot bigger than the one they gave me in the tutorial. Uh, so, we had to go to an enemy uh, island and loot a bunch of these explosive barrels and take them back and sell them to somebody. Uh, I forget why, but we had to do these things. Well, I'm running back to the ship with a barrel, and he shoots it. There we go. I die, but I come back to life, and they've got all four, so we go sailing. We're heading back to, to, to stop... To, to sell the, the stuff. And, um... So, I see an opportunity. Right? I have... We, we have... All of their explosive barrels are down below deck. But mine's up on deck. Like, I just got on the ship, I just put it down, and we're sailing back towards where we're going to sell them. And then I'm like, hey. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. All four of them were down below deck. I, 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 I remember now. The explosion came from um, the entire time that we had been on the island. He kept throwing these little bomb items at me that would blow, up, blow me up a little bit. <clears throat> no big deal, but... You know, I just died a few times. It's no big deal. Uh, so I saw the opportunity to give him a little payback because one of the last things I grabbed before I left the island was one of those little bomb items. I forget what it's called, but, you know, I've only played the game, like, once. Maybe twice. So... <laughs> he's steering the ship. And I, in my infinite wisdom, start running back towards the back. I'm like... He's not going to know that I'm going to do anything. And even if he did, he would have to end driving the ship in order to even try to evade. So I start going towards him, and then I switch to my weapon, and I throw it. Now, he told me that he could see the gears turning in my head. He knew what was going on. He knew what I was doing. What I did not know... When I threw this bomb, was that these explosions go through the deck of the ship, and all of the gunpowder is directly below the teller. So I throw the bomb, the bomb explodes, and the entire aft end of the ship gets blown the fuck off. And both me and this guy die leaving our third crewmate to try and bail the ship and repair it as best he can. And we came within milliseconds of it going under before we finished resurrecting and started bailing with him. 
and repairing the ship. Uh, <laughs> and we had to turn around and go back and do it again. <laughs> Steal four more barrels. Three, they can't, they got three of them. Put them down in the hole. And I've got the last one, I'm swimming out to the ship and this dipshit comes over and shoots me from still on the ship while I'm trying to get to the ladder to climb up onto it. It explodes the barrel, but I'm close enough to all the barrels that are inside the ship that it explodes them too. And I'm like, man, I've got a Zoom meeting in like 20 minutes and I have no idea how Zoom works. I'm not, I'm gonna be late. I'm not gonna know what I'm doing. It was it was a hilarious just just a comedy of errors every moment unscripted but hilarious um uh, I need to I, I need to pay a little bit of attention to the to the ship to the plane okay so we have a top of descent we do not uh I'm gonna say probably here at WRN. That we're using interdestination data. Okay. Let me grab some toolkit. Whether where I'm going. Okay, so we need to go to performance, I think. Descent approach. Okay, so the Q and H is 1008 temperature is zero um overcast at five wind is zero one zero three knots the same on top of the section. Top of the section should be uh, at Varna, W-R-N. Hey, what did I say? I said, right at W-R-N. Gotta go see you guys. Okay, take care, Josh. Hopefully, uh, your pixels will not die in vain. Oh, I don't have any of your pixels to take care of. Okay. I'll take care. Don't die. Uh, always good advice. This thing still flies really funky. I'm not a big fan. I love the project. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a freeware A2, A320. Can't be mad about that. I am really, really not hopeful for this, uh, this, uh, battle in Stream Raiders. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna die really badly. Without Trash Man's help, I think we're gonna die. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. I mean, either way.
Uh, but, at the very least, we do have our destination is on the radar. We know that our uh, runway is at 314 feet. Above mean sea level. This feels a little better. Yeah, see, that puts me actually at headrest level. And it aligns properly. So, the way this thing works, right, is there's three dots here. There's three little balls. And you're supposed to do it so that you only see uh, one ball, the ball on your side and the red one. And that's how you adjust your seat in the A3, A320. A it's a really cool system. Um... So that's, that's how I kind of try to align myself in the simulator, is to make that ball disappear. A little bit difficult to do in X-Plane because it doesn't really uh, function the same way. It kind of works... Uh, like there's, there's no perspective, I think, in X-Plane 11. I'm not entirely sure, but it feels like there's not really a perspective. We're like, here you can see as I zoom out and zoom in, you can kind of see the fisheye of the perspective kicking in. There's not a lot of it, but um, in x 11, zooming in and out, it's basically just a zoom. It doesn't change your perspective any. So that's, you know, it is what it is. But I would much rather have a simulator that is a little more uh, antiquated and doesn't look as pretty than to be in a simulator that doesn't function, right? And that's the problem, is, is X-Plane functions. It just doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It just doesn't look as good, right? But it flies. It flies fantastically, and you have a lot of, of add-on support that you just don't have with MFS, at least not yet. There are plan you know, there, there are people that are planning on releasing tools for it and helpful shit like that, but it's not out yet. Um, it's too new, and I'm, and that's why I say MFS has a lot of potential, but right now it's still a game. It's not a simulator. You feel me? Uh, it's not ready to be called a simulator yet. Ooh, we got a straight on crosswind. Holy shit. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a break for a few minutes. Let me see if I can't find you an interesting camera angle before I go. You know what, that'll work. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, I will be gone for about five minutes, and then I will be back shortly. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you. I will see you guys in five minutes. Alright, and I am back. 
Hello, everybody. Don't anticipate me needing that again. All right. I'm gonna really quick check the battery status on my earbuds. Oh, we look good. We're fine. All right. Let's jump back up in the cockpit. Ooh, look at that weather, folks. That's going to be interesting. Luckily, we're flying way the hell over it. So nothing to worry about. <clears throat> so we still have ways to go, I think. We are in. That's going to be our top of descent. Actually, it's marked as a top of descent now. And we're about to have to do it. We're going to come down to, I want to say, 3,000 feet. I wish I could scroll this down faster, but then that's been the story of every Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's already descending. Even though I haven't told it to level change yet. Thanks! Ah ha 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 ha. Alright, fine, fine. <clears throat> okay, just making sure that my, uh... Spotify is working properly. All right, so we're on descent. Um, landing elevation should be set to automatic, uh, which it is. Uh, make two arrivals is completed. Performance approach completed. Top of descent wins. Not gonna worry about it because it won't let me anyway. Probably. Let's double check. Wind. Climb wind. Cruise wind, scent wind, nothing doing. Cool. Um, FCU altitude set and push. We are done with that. Speed brake half as required, which is not required. <coughs> uh, altimeter can be set to the QNH at. Flight level 180 or per procedure for this region. For this region, we need to be looking at a trans out of 4,000 feet. Oh boy! Oh buddy! We are going down to the deck before we switch this thing over. Also, I never turned off my landing lights. <laughs> Oh boy, we are we are descending directly into this, aren't we? Oh, this is fun. Oh, I hate everything about this. Okay, so we are constrained at flight level 116. We are looking at constraints. Ooh, I can put airports over here. Yes! Finally, that's not locked together. All right. A little broader sit. No. I do think the plane told us to descend a little too early. Now, if, if I was able to get my I have my instrument rating, I should be able to do this entire landing looking at nothing but this. And I think I could. I do. Um, 
maybe not with a 75 knot crosswind. We're in the middle of all this weather. Look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous. And we're going to descend right into it. This is going to be fun. Uh, chances of crash are probably at about uh, 40 or 50 percent, I would say. Stream Raiders ready. So we got about two minutes left on Stream Raiders. We are descending into the, we are descended into the soup, technically, very 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 slightly. Oh boy, here we go. This is where it gets interesting, folks. We're about to see how good this weather radar is, because I feel like. Uh, I feel like we're gonna get our ass kicked. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna run one more stream raiders after this, assuming we survive, which I'm not not terribly hopeful on us surviving. Actually, no, I think I might not. Uh, I'm gonna be too busy to handle the last one. So that's going to be the end of Stream Raiders here in about two minutes when this fight is done being fought and possibly lost. <laughs> Now, normally, this is the part where I would be looking up procedures for approach. Um, I'm not going to worry about that here. I don't care. Uh, we're just going to we're just going to manage to get the plane on the ground, and if we do that, I'm going to consider it a good day. That's how that's going to work. Also, today's flight was just chosen at random, but in general, I do allow you guys to uh, determine where we go. All you gotta do is jump into the Discord, which I can throw out a command for right now. Uh, Discord. <clears throat> Hop into the Discord. Then go into the flight suggestions channel and drop your suggestions there. Any place you want to go, any place you want to go from. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, so that should be ready to begin. Uh, I'm going to flip over here and switch to stream readers. <clears throat> uh, what, what happens? Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna run this. Hopefully that, uh, hopefully the, uh, the game was not gone for that entire time. Hopefully my Templar will help us get through the nonsense. And we have already dealt with the boss itself. Although who knows, maybe that is chunk yep, that's that's chewing out and spitting it's chewing up and spitting out another boss. 
let's get that destroyed. And then I think we're okay. Yeah, I think we got it. I think we got it. animation all right ladies and gentlemen that is victory hype in the chat we get some ch cat jams what's inside of this captain chest it's gonna be one uh musketeer it looks like yeah one musketeer for a lucky winner also seven gold for everyone 15 for me i would really rather give more of that to you guys but So we got extra gold and five tanks. Let's look at our army. Yeah, that gives us an upgrade on our tank. Win 20 campaign battles. Yeah, I couldn't read that fast enough. Alright, so. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I will do one more. Uh, since we won that. With relative ease. Um. Ooh, we can collect this. Gives us some flag bearer scrolls. <clears throat> Road skull scrolls. Okay, um... All right, so let's do one more. We'll do one more. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, boy. That's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to take a warrior. Close. Take a warrior, and I'm going to put him right here, because I want to take care of that beast first. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the last Stream Raiders of the day is starting now. You have 30 minutes to place your your pieces and have our pixels kill their pixels. Hopefully, they won't kill many of our pixels because that would be going in direction wrong. Um, the killing is supposed to be done by us, not them. We switch this back, and you can see this uh, interesting light we've got going on here uh we are in some very nasty weather right now <clears throat> and we are still descending there's still no uh descent path indicator should be a little dot over here that indicates where we are compared to our plat path anti-ice Anti-ice, folks. You gotta turn the anti-ice on. Looks like true air temperature is zero degrees. Great. Ah. Uh, oh, that's from me. I'm back. Glad to see nothing has changed. Nothing except for us almost losing a battle. So there is a link out in chat for the Stream Raiders, and I'm doing the last one of the day. Um, we're hoping to kick these little frog dudes' asses, little Bulbasaurs or whatever they are. And I just move things instead of clicking on them. I'm clicking on them in OBS and not in the actual game. <laughs> oh, I'm dumb. Okay, retro monster. An enemy with a larger than normal sprite. It must be pretty tough. Its attacks deal AoE damage to nearby foes. Fuck. Fuck! Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do. If we lose, we lose. As opposed to here, where if we lose, we die. Wait, what? Why is this only showing? Oh, because it's only got data for forward, 
this is currently set in nav mode. We need an arc mode. There we are. We're still in some very, very nasty weather. And I am not happy about it. <laughs> How am I doing? Um, nervous. Real nervous. I, th I think we've probably got about a 30 to 30 to 50 percent chance of, of thrashing today. Um, because we've got some serious weather. Uh, you don't want to be flying when you see all this pink. Pink is real bad. Um, real, real bad. So, uh, but I'm not feeling a lot of being kicked around yet. I haven't had to take the controls or anything. So, maybe it's just really pretty clouds. And Microsoft is just really bad at modeling actual weather. That would not surprise me. Not one bit. Yeah, it might be interesting. If we crash, we crash. I'm not worried about it. By level 115 at Argus. Alright. So basically, we're going to come in. We're going to make a 90 degree left. We're going to descend into Lerop. Lima, Romeo, Oscar, Papa. So, yeah, we're landing in this. <laughs> uh, that's going to go so well. I'm going to die. How are you guys feeling? Y you fancy dying? Look, man, I don't like to drive in that kind of weather. And now I'm flying a multi-ton aircraft. <laughs> I mean, my, my current gross weight is... Uh, 65 tons. Almost 66 tons. I mean, metric tons, but still. I can't see shit. <laughs> oh, this is not going well. So, uh, I'm, I'm having a hacking concern. Um, we're also not changing over to local barometer until 4,000 feet. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, that feels like I might fly into a mountain. Uh, but at least it's daytime. So uh, a couple years ago, when I was first starting to stream Flight Sim, uh, I flew to Pearson in Toronto. Oh, don't worry about it, man. Don't feel bad. You had stuff you had to go do. Um, I would not feel good if you... You know, forsook your 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 real life uh, responsibilities just to sit here with the stream. Uh, I appreciate you being here at all and being so engaged in the conversation. That helps a whole lot. Um, it has made this stream a lot more fun than it would have been otherwise. But uh, but yeah, so one of my first flights on stream. And this was before I even knew how to use SimBrief. Um, I was still just flying point to point. I knew nothing about approaches or departures. And uh, so I just plugged everything into the navigation computer that I knew how to do. And I took the fuck off. And I tried to fly there, and unfortunately, I had no idea how much fuel I needed. I did get there, but it was stormy. It was the middle of the night. And so I, I came down on approach. I managed to get kind of lined up, 
but I was I was way off, so I had to go around. Um, then the second time, I was able to line up pretty close. I had to slide translate to the right at the last minute when I saw the runway. And I got close, but then wind shear. So I had to fly off, do it again. I lined up this time a lot better, but I'm coming down. And I think that was the time there was a, uh, a little GA plane sitting on the runway doing donuts. And I didn't see it until the last minute, so I had to wave off at the last minute, took off, started turning around, and then everything goes dark. And I don't understand why. And I'm checking all my all, all, all of my instruments and everything, and I'm looking looking at all the settings. Everything looks good, but I, I'm, I'm sitting there struggling to, to keep the plane as aloft as I can, trying to land on the ground as best I can. I've got my gear down, I've got my flaps out, it's, and I've got no control over any of it now. So if my gear hadn't been out, I'd just be belly flopping. Uh, but I, I wound up landing at 12,000 feet per minute, or 1,200 feet per minute, uh, which is really, really bad. That's destroying half the plane. Uh, it's basically a belly flop, only with gear. And uh, it turns out I'd run out of gas. I had no fuel, and my engine stopped, and I fell out of the sky like a brick. <laughs> I'm the edge of my seat waiting for a mountain to come in and destroy my plane. Please don't say that. <laughs> my seat is like one foot long, and I'm always sitting on the edge of my seat. But that's beside the point. The point is, a mountain could be anywhere. You got a point, though, so we're going to try and... Turn on terrain. Okay, so there's not really any terrain in the area. I don't think. Anyway. Uh, I'm still very concerned. Oh, uh, we're under 12,000 feet, so I'm going to turn on landing lights. Nope. On. 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 Okay, landing lights are on. Indy data is on constraints. Uh, we can go ahead and turn on the LS. We won't be able to tune it for a while. <sighs> I mean, it's Southeast Europe, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, they're everywhere, but... Uh, right now we're over Romania, and I don't think we have any in the area. So I think we're good. Strained to 5,000 feet. We need to be under 9150 for Austal. Under 78 for tow bag. We need to be under 66 for IV deck. No, you don't. You don't get taken off of standard barometric pressure until 4,000 feet. But I'm gonna do it anyway because, fuck, this is scary. Oh no, battery low. That's not good. Um. Okay, I'm going to look at this real quick. Uh, weather 1009. Uh, where's my battery monitor? Oh, 20%. Uh, I'd rather deal with it now than in the middle of landing. So I'm going to switch this. <clears throat> All right, now give me just a second to get this changed. Properties, speakers. There we go, okay, all fixed. Well, what is there to hurt, hurt me? Mediterranean sharks, angry revels, poverty? I mean, probably. 
Probably all those things. Uh, well, maybe not sharks. I think Romania is landlocked. Uh, let me look at this. Look at my live map. Oh, come on, I got a pen. I got a pen. I got a pen in the ass. Okay, so there is... There is a sea here. I'm not sure what sea it is. There is a sea. It looks like, or no, that's weather. I'm sorry. So it is connected to the Black Sea. That one little small area, I think. And that might actually be owned by Turkey. I'm not sure because that's Constantinople. No, Constanta. So yeah, that it does have uh, a border with the Black Sea. Um, what I'm more worried about is pancaking into the runway. Surprisingly, the 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 the, the plane itself has behaved quite well um, compared to what I I was used to in Microsoft Flight. It still doesn't fly like an Airbus, but it's not dying. I'll give it that. I still don't have control over that. That's unfortunate. Remember that time when a plane crashed in Romania? I did. I. I don't think it crashed. I think it was shot down. I think it was shot down. But yeah, there, there's, there's been some nastiness uh, with the airline industry. Is it bad you want to see me pancaking the runway? No, man. I, I, look, I'm not, I'm not a professional pilot. Like, if, if I die, I die. If I fuck it up, I fuck it up. I have fucked up in this a lot. Um, in flight sim, I'm not very good. I don't think anybody is. Okay, so our flaps extension speeds. 230 knots, 215 knots, 200 knots. Okay, so we're still basically the same. Yeah. Yeah, our flap extension speeds are the same. <sighs> okay, we're slowing down to our first flap extension speed. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our lights. I'm shaking. All right. The LS is not aligned. It's fine for the moment. All right, this is where it starts getting busy. Um, all right, flaps one. We're gonna descend to 200. Obviously, you're not a pro, pro pilot, you're a Twitch streamer, not a Boeing 737 airline pilot. Yeah, exactly. So if, if I crash, I crash, and I will learn from crashing. I'm not going to worry about it. You know, I I have 179 fake passengers with me, not real ones. And to be truthful, I won't even feel bad about it because, like, I've talked to a real airline pilot that really flew the A320. And he said that he has no idea how we do it because um, as simulator pilots, we do everything. We control the whole ass plane. In... Um, in the actual plane, they have a separation of workflow so that there is so that the pilot the the pilot flying is doing some things, the pilot monitoring is doing other things, and he has no idea how we manage to control the entire whole ass airplane without a co-pilot. Okay, speed check flaps three. 
No, that's flaps two, I'm sorry. 185, speed check, flaps three. Flaps full. I'm gonna go ahead and drop gear. Arm the ground spoilers. Uh, auto brake as required. Bitch. Um, he came all green. We are on final approach. I still don't have any. Oh, this is uncomfortable. I still don't have a um, ILS. Why is my ILS not working? Um, what is the ILS frequency? Radio, no, I need this radio. ILS, ILS, doesn't tell me shit. Coming in for two six left. There we go. Okay, okay. We have our ILS. That's what was wrong. Cool. Cool. That almost. We're really bad. Why is there so much pink? But it is my little pony school. Yeah, that's the weather. <laughs> the weather is very angry. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and arm the approach. AP one and two doesn't work. Yeah, landing time. <laughs> I would not trust this thing to do a category three, but I may have to and just see how it goes because if I can't see the runway, I have to let it auto land. If it 200, if it 200 feet above, uh, above ground level, I can't see the runway. I have to let the plane auto land. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on final approach, and um, we're fully configured. We're just, oh boy, oh this is this is gonna be fun. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, I am so nervous. Because I don't think we're gonna see the runway. I think I think this is gonna have to be a straight up category three landing. If you want me to, I can name every robot master from the Mega Man series. Awesome. I actually did not play much OG Mega Man. Uh, I did play uh, two. Pretty much, uh, Mega Man 2. But 
I did not get to play much after that because I was very, very young and I had to... Um, I had to rely on my mom buying me the games. Oh, I'm so nervous. We're going to be under 2,500. Okay, it looks like our localizer is coming in. Okay, we are bang on the, uh, pardon me, the localizer. We're, we're waiting for the glide slope to come in. Okay. Um, and then once it hits that dot, it's going to come down a lot faster. getting a lot more uh, control. Oh boy. I would really like to bring this in manually. Like, that would be ideal. Do I want you to? I mean, sure. They get... They, they do start to, like, lose the, the plot with um, naming them. Ooh, glide slope captured. All right, so we should start descending now, and we are. Cool, perfect. We are fully configured. Um, <laughs> I've got another friend of mine that would that you two would get along, um, and I'll grab his YouTube when I get off. Yeah, we're flying through soup. Yeah, th this 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 is this is really bad weather. Really, really, really bad weather, and I can't see shit. And we may be doing a category three landing for the first time since I stopped doing them. Like I stopped doing them a long time ago because the there was no like there's no skill involved in a category three landing. The plane just lands itself. Um. Which, when you can do something else, it feels like cheating. Oh, fuck. I don't have my seatbelt signs on. <laughs> Any of you who were standing up at the time, I hope you aren't now because we're going to be landing very, very shortly. By the way, I just want to point out, I called 8.10 as when we were going to be on the ground. It is 8 o'clock right now. Well, it's 7.59. So I just want to say that I think I may have pegged when we were going to land. Because I think that's probably about three to five minutes of flight. Wafy coming in with a lurk. Thank you so much. Um, we're probably not going to do the stream raiders until we get on the ground, regardless of whether it comes up before. Okay, I can see the ground, and I am very scared. Okay, as soon as I see the lights for the runway, I'm I'm canceling the autopilot. Okay, I got him. This is mine. Ooh, okay. Alright, I'm going to be very quiet here for a minute. Oh, what are you doing? Don't give me that. this. Oh, it's giving me an unstable approach.
it, hold it, hold it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Romania. Oh. Well, that was tense. I know I'm getting all drunk and weaving all over the road. Okay, slow down. Okay. Yeah. Turn the weather radar off. All right, let's find ourselves a nice parking spot. I forgot to use my reversers. It's okay. Ground spoilers are disarmed. Flaps are retracted. AP master on. Wait for the flap open message. Let's actually change my mind. We're going to go over here. Okay, we're gonna turn off our runway turn off lights. Turn off our taxi lights. All right, now. All right, parking brake set. Uh, we should probably need brake fans, but they're probably inoperative. Yes, they are. Uh, flaps retracted, APU masters on, APU start. That'll take a few seconds. Uh, terrain on ND is off. Brake fans are not modeled. Uh, park brake pressure is green. Park brake is set. Anti-ice can come off. Uh, APU bleed can come on as soon as the APU is available. Um... We can turn off our wing lights, nav and logo, all right, let's see, uh, all right, we got cut man, elect man, ice man, fire man, bomb man, guts man, metal man. Uh, bubble man, heart, heat man, wood man, air man, crash man, quick man, flash man, spark man, snake man, needle man, hard man, top man, shadow man, magnet man, gemini man, pharaoh man, ring man, dust man, skull man, dive man, drill man, toad man, bright man, stone man, charge man, wave man, gravity man, 
Crystal Man, Gyro Man, Star Man, Napalm Man, Fi Flame Man, Blizzard Man, Plant Man, Tomahawk Man, Yamato Man, Night Man, Centaur Man, and Wind Man. I feel like there should have been... Okay, I, there is a Cut Man in there. I just missed it. And that's only one to six. All right, so that's on. Let's turn on AP Bleed. And then we can cut Engines 1 and 2 Master. Whoa, okay. Total time of flight, 2 hours, 8 minutes, which means we actually got there a lot faster than we were going to. Oof. Ow. Uh, okay. Continue. Uh, anti-ice is... Okay, uh, runway turnoffs are off, wing lights are off, nav lights are off, beacon can come off now that we've turned off our engines. <clears throat> Seat belts can come off. Um, <clears throat> I'll stop this. Uh, fuel pumps can come off. Transponder to standby. McDo's dim, I'm not going to worry about that. Brake fan off, which isn't modeled. And then securing the aircraft. Final checklist we get to go through. Uh, parking brake is on. The deers can come off. APU bleed can come off. APU Master can come off. Emergency exit lights off. No smoking light off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, uh, where the hell are we? Uh, welcome to wherever the hell we are. Um, that would be Bucharest. Welcome to Bucharest in Romania. Thank you so much for flying Air Rack Attack Airlines. Uh, let's showcase the outside camera drone. Yeah, that's still not working. And it should not be able to adjust those. Uh, how was our parking job? I can't tell. We got ice all over everything. Which is bullshit because we had our anti-ice on, but that's apparently not functioning right now. Let's see if I can't get an angle where I can see the jetway. Oh, it looks like we are bang on. I mean, I can't really tell that well because of the angles, but it looks like we are spot on. Oh my word, that is beautiful. All right, quick question. What happened to the normal safety instruction video? Um, so somebody emailed me the normal safety instruction video and um, it got lost in the mail. So I had to make my own. Uh, so I made it up and that's, that's how that happened. I just, uh, I lost it and I think it's for the better. I think, I think everyone is better off or my having lost that particular uh, piece of equipment. Um, also, the uh, like everything else in Microsoft Flight, the AV system is inoperative. So we couldn't load it up even if we had it. So you just have to deal with me. Um, it's the best we got. Uh, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. So, but what we are gonna do is we're going to start this battle and we're going to hope that we're going to win. I almost forgot about this. All right, so we're going to try and win this and we're going to see what happens. We're probably going to die. Um, but there is always hope. Hope and good intentions. Oh, hey, at least we got the thing that spawns more bosses already down. That's awesome. I think we're actually going to win this. That is fantastic.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here tonight. Yeah, going on a wing and a pair. You're not wrong. All right, let's open this captain chest. What do we get? Somebody's going to get two barbarians. Barbarian is a very nice unit. I like it. And that goes to Mad Dog SK or Mad Frog SK. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. I will see you tomorrow for more X5. Take care, everybody. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bucharest. Um, you might have noticed a little bit of a cut there. There's not really much I can do about that. I have to handle my stream on the outro, and this is for you guys who are watching it after the fact. We have landed here in Bucharest, and for some reason, the uh, the game just really doesn't like uh, ice. It doesn't work properly. So even though I had my anti-ice on, I've still got all this caked up on my uh, surfaces. Anyway, uh, we're going to take off now. Thank you guys so much for being here and for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell. All those shilling things. Um, and please do comment. Like, Let me know what you like, what you don't like. What's going well and what's not. What you want to see. If you want, you can hit the Discord. That should be linked down in the description box below. Uh, put in more flight suggestions there or also some game suggestions in the stream suggestions channel. Um, <clears throat> because whatever I am streaming, that is also what I'm going to be uploading to YouTube. So if you guys want to see more content of a different type than that that I'm doing right now, you're going to have to jump in my Discord and let me know what it is you want to see. Uh, because I want to make you happy, but I need your help to do it. All right, guys. So thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in the next video. I release these. I, I release Flight Sim videos every Friday, and I release uh, Mega Man videos every Monday. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.